All right, here we go. We are now going to talk about the basics of factoring polynomials. We've just gone through the uh, factoring out of a GCF. Now we need to go into actually factoring different polynomials. So let's take a look at this first one and talk about this. Remember, factoring is when you have two or more quantities that when multiplied together give you what, 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 give you, what you started with, right? Well, this answer that you got is what we got in the previous problems where we multiplied out, right? Foil, or uh, sorry, factoring is just the reverse foil method. That's all it is. It's reverse foil method. So if I were to ask you to do this, and we're going to segue into this by doing some foil. If I asked you how you go about Multiplying this out, what would you do? Distribute. Okay, you would take what? X times X, X times 3. Okay, let's get that first. What is X times X? 2X, X to the second, 2. Okay, X squared. Alright, and then what do we get when we do uh, 3X? 3X. And what do we get here? 2X. And then what do we get here? What? Plus 6. Plus six, right? <laughs> and then we collect like terms, correct? Yeah. And what do we get? Okay. That's what we do when we multiply. Now, factoring is the exact opposite. It is the reverse FOIL method. We are going to start with this, build our way back to this. Factor it into two or more quantities that when multiplied together, give you what you started with. We need to talk about how we break it down from this and get back to here. Okay? So, let's examine this a little bit deeper. Okay? I'm going to rewrite this and we're going to talk through this entire thing. And then we're going to start to try and factor some of these more basic polynomials. So, how did we get this right here? Multiply by 2. That was this times this, right? Yeah. yeah. We got x squared from that times that, correct? Yeah. How do we get this middle stuff here? Well, that was the sum of these two in the middle, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which was what? When we foiled it out and multiplied. The x times 3. The x times 3, which gave me the what? 3x. Yeah. And then the what? 2 times 3x. So in other words, in FOIL method, it is the outer and the inner, right? Yeah. This is made up of the first times the first. This middle term here is made up of my outer and my inner, correct? And then, how do I get this last term here? How do I get that last term here? What did I do? 2 times 3. 2 times 3 gave me what? 36. So when I then, and I'm color coding it for a reason here, when I then collect like terms, I get x squared plus what? 5x plus what? Alright. So, we now need to look at each of these portions individually and try and build back to this. Again, or build back to, to this part right here. That's the factory. We're going to reverse uh, FOIL method to do this. So, to do this, we need to ask ourselves, how did I create this? We want to factor this into two quantities that would multiply together, give me what I started with. We first need to look at this. What created this? What times what? This position times this position in FOIL, right? And what needs to go in here? What times what will give me x squared? X's. So we will put the x's in the place right there. Now if we're successful and able to figure out what goes here and here, I'm done with this. So I now need to go and look where? The other equation. Well, well I'm going to look here, but what portion of this am I going to look at next? Six. The what? Six. The 6, because this times this, if I can figure out the factors of this and figure out which ones go here, I'm done with the process already. 
So then I need to go look at my last term. Now, ask yourself, what are the factors of positive 6? 2 and 3. Okay, 2 and 3. What else? Negative 3 and 2. 1 and 6. Two. What else? Negative 3 and 2. Negative 2, negative 3. What else? Negative 3 Well, that's the same thing. Yeah. Negative 1 and negative 6, right? Now, how did we get? We need to figure out which one goes in here, right? We know that all of these multiplied together give me positive 6, correct? Yeah. They're the factors of 6. That's why we go straight to that last term to factor it, so that I know that any of the combinations here that I put in here will obviously multiply to positive 6. But then the question lies is, how do I get the positive 5 <coughs> in the middle? Remember, it is what? Outers multiply together to get this, right? Plus the inners multiplied together to get this. And those added together give me this, right? So it is the factors of the last number added together gives me my middle term. So what is going to go in these spots? You're going to have to ask yourself, what are the factors of positive 6 that what? 30. Add up to what? What do these two add up to? Are these factors of 6? Yeah. yeah, they are, right? And then we have to make all the middle number, correct? Yeah. So what am I going to put in here? Which of these factors add up to 5? There's only one of them that add up to 5. Say it. 2 plus 3. What? 2 plus 3. Okay, so it's this one here. This would give me what? Negative 5, right? That's not what I want. I want positive 5, right? This would give me what? This would give me what? The only one that can work is what? Positive 2 and what? Positive 3. Does that make sense? Now, how could I check to see if I'm right? Not plug it back in, but what? Foil it out, multiply it out, distribute this to everything in the second, then this to everything in the second, or use the foil method to check yourself. This times this is what? That makes it work, right? This times this is what? This times this is what? The combination is what? 2 plus 3. 5x, right? And then this times this is what? We factor. We found two quantities that will multiply together, give me what I started with, right? That is factoring polynomials, specifically trinomials. All right, so let's take a look at another one on this. We're going to kind of take some time to really examine a whole bunch of these. Number two, we have x squared minus 8x plus 15. Please write it down. I want to know what quantities, when multiplied together, give me that polynomial. That's what it means to be a factor of it. Two quantities, two or more quantities, when multiplied together, give you what you're starting with. That means I want to break it up into two portions, right? Now, where do we always start? We will start at my first term. Because that right there is made up of this times this, correct? In FOIL method. We're just going in reverse. We're trying to figure out what two quantities are being multiplied together. X and X. Now, where do I go? Next one. Nope, where do I go? Oh, the last. The last. Because if I'm able to determine shh, the factors of 15, one's going to go here and one's going to go there, right? Because this right here, this times this, gives me my last term, correct? This times this gives me my last term. That times that gave me the 6. So if I'm able to now find the factors of this, all right, I will be able to figure out which, were the, which one of those, or which of those combinations add up to negative 8, okay? Now, what are the factors of positive 15? 3 and 5. Okay, we have 3 and 5. What else? 1 and 15. 1 and 15. Anything else? Negatives. Negative 3 and what? 5. And those are all the factors, right? Now, 
What are those? Which of those pairs add up to negative eight? The middle the term, right? Top, top three. There's only one of them, right? Eight, sixteen, negative sixteen, negative eight. That means one of these needs to be negative three. One of these needs to be negative five. I don't really care of the order. Now, let's check ourselves. This times this is what? That's two. Good. Right? This times this is what? This times this is what? And this times this is what? Does that give me my original polynomial? Therefore, this is my answer. Does that make any sense whatsoever? It's going to take time to do this. This will probably be the most difficult stuff you do, you've done this year. But this is probably the most important part of math. One of the most important parts is factoring. All right? Now, let's take a look at some more. Shh. Let's be quiet. Can you do seven? That one's out of order. Yep. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Do that one Guys, quiet, please. Number seven. Now, looking at this right now, what is different than what you've seen before? Which means, is this in standard form? So in order to factor any polynomial, you need to make sure it's in standard form. Is this in standard form? Yeah. What's the degree? Uh, two, one. Zero. John, what's the form here? Zero, one, two, three. Is that in standard form? No. So how could I rewrite this to get it into standard form? x squared plus 5x minus 24. Now I can operate like I did in the last problem. <coughs> so now, where do we start? We want to find two quantities that when multiplied together give me this trinomial, right? Or polynomial. I start here because this times this has to make that. The only way to factor x squared is x and x. Correct? Now where do we go? The last term. What are the factors of negative 24? Six. 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 interruption. Other than students AP testing for it today, any senior that has not turned in their iPad and cables, please report to the junior pod at this time. Thank you. Now, what are the factors of negative 24? Six and four. Not six and four. Negative four. Well, one of them's got to be negative, right? Six and negative four. Six and negative four. What else? Uh, one and negative 24. Okay, what else? One and 24. What? Just one and 24. One and 24 gives me positive, not negative. Can you, uh, can you just what? We already got that. What else? Four times negative six. Okay, four times negative six. That's not the same as this, right? Negative, negative is four and the positive six there. We switched it up. What? Negative one, negative one and twenty-four. What else? Nope. Oh, eight and three. Okay, but eight and what? Negative three. And what else? Negative eight and negative three. Okay. What else? Two and twelve. Two and what? Twelve. Two and negative twelve or negative two and twelve. Five. Well, that's it, right? Now, what are those, which one of those adds up to positive five? What? What is it? Eight, negative three. Positive eight and negative three. Right? That gives me the positive five that I'm looking for. Now, remember. We know that this times this is going to work out, right? Because we factored it directly. 
We know this times this is going to equal that because we factored it directly, right? This is what we need to check. And this is made up of what? The outers plus the inners, right? The outers is what here? 3x, negative. Negative 3x. The inners is what? So, 8x. Does negative 3x and 8x give you 5x? So I'm good. I just checked my answer. You shouldn't have to ask us, did I get it right or not? We should. We will just say, hey, did you check it at all? The answer will probably be no. Otherwise, you wouldn't be asking us that question. So this right here is my final answer. Does that make sense? All right. Now, take a look at number eight. Take a look at number eight, because this is just the beginning portions of factoring. We're just factoring some basic polynomials right now. Now, let's take a look at number eight and walk through that. We have x squared plus 9xy plus 20y squared. What do you notice is different? There's y's. There's y's involved in these, right? Now, the process does not change. We still want to find two quantities that multiply together to give me what I start with, right? Okay, well, still start with your first term. What is the only, remember, that is this times this, right? What is the only way? X and X. You can't do X squared in one because that doesn't get you anywhere, right? Hasn't changed anything, so we have to actually find factors of x squared. Now where do I go? I still go to the last term. Now there are two parts to this last term, right? And how do we get, how do we arrive at this last term? We did what times what? This times what? This gives me that, correct? Now, take it part by part. Take the variable bar part first. Can I factor y squared? Yes. Y and y. And where does it go? Remember, this times this makes this, right? So we're going to take a y and put it here, and a y and put it here. We're just taking care of that portion first. We're then going to take care of this portion next. Now, what are the factors of, what are the factors of positive 20? 10 and 2. 5 and 4. 10 and, and 2. 1 and 20. 1 and 20. Negative 5 and 4. Negative 10 and negative 2. And go ahead and tell that. Right? Excellent. Good. Now, which of those add up to what? 10 and negative 2. This right here, right? Yeah. We need not positive 9. Are there any that add up to positive 9? First one. This one right here, right? So what does that mean? Five plus y. five plus 4y. Now, check it. Again, I already know that this times this makes this, right? Because we factored it directly. I already know that this times this equals that, because I factored it directly. But what we did indirectly was make the middle term, right? So now, we need to check the middle term. The middle term is made up of this times this, which is what? 4xy, very good. And what is this times this? 4, again, y, x, and x, y are the exact same, right? Because order doesn't matter when you're multiplying. And that's what's going on in between all these portions of this first term here. So what do I get now? 9xy. Because when we add, we collect like terms. Those are like, they're both x to the first, y to the first, so we add them together and get 9xy. Is that my middle? Yeah. So then I know that this is right. Because I just checked myself. Do we have any questions on that? I'd like you to get 1 through 10 done by tomorrow. That's it. We will talk about tomorrow.
what happens when there is something in front of this x squared? When we have a leading coefficient of something other than 1. Notice that every one of these has a 1 in front, right? It's implied. We're going to talk tomorrow about what happens when there's not a 1 in, in front and there's 2, 3, negative 4. Different numbers in front. Alright? Different leading coefficients. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. So I want 1 through 10 for tomorrow. If you have any questions, can I please ask Mrs. Morai? And we will answer any questions you have. Okay?